O God of all creation, we give you thanks and praise that you dwell among us. You are with us, generations upon generations. You are with those who wiggle, and you are those who long for those days. Together, O oh Lord, may we be inspired to love you and to love one another. May the words that are spoken today be the words you intend for your listeners to hear, and in hearing, together we will share. We pray this in all things in your name. Amen. Well, I'm going to start off with a story just to remind you a little bit. If you know very much about me, I've shared this with you maybe once or twice, but I don't like shopping, except office supplies. I'm on it. Sticky notes, love them. All the different little highlighty pen things, I'm on it. But shopping, not so much, except on Friday, you know, going to the big sale. That's where I went. You know, the big sale, you know that, church, uh, that store that we're talking about. Every time they have a sale, this is going to be the biggest sale, 80% off of everything. We had to do a little bit of shopping. See, my girls have been wanting coats <clears throat> since September. Lucky for me, it was a little warm, and they walked quickly into the buildings. But coats are really on sale right now, 80% if you go and, and look for them. Mittens, hats, gloves. So I went shopping, and I found the, everything I wanted, took my stash up to the cashier. Now, another thing you might remember about me, or I'm going to share with you the first time, technology and I, not so much. I, I don't know why, but I touch a button, choom. but my kids had taught me this really cool thing. If you pull out your cell phone, and you put in this little code, and some of you call it an app, but code, guess what happens? You can even get more sale items. I went online, I got an additional 20% off of everything I had, laid it in front of the, the clerk, and she said, yes. That's great. We'll, we'll, we even found more. Now, she kind of humored me for a while after she was looking at my phone, and then she got out the paper copy, right? And she started clicking and clicking, and I was so proud of me. I had my stash and my big pile, and I get ready to leave, and I look right behind me. And the woman behind me held up a pair of gloves. Her stash, very small. And I got my bags, and I'm ready to go. And I put them down, and I wrist, saying, have you ever seen this app on your phone? She didn't have one. And then I said, let's walk together. And we go to the counter. And I held out my phone again, that clerk knowing we just were there. And she said, sure. Let's see what else we can find. My stash, my worldly stuff, meant nothing in that moment where we were just together. <laughs> she held on to her gloves as the greatest treasure ever. And my bag all of a sudden seemed so insignificant. Where am I going with all of this? Our passage today, it, it starts off, if you read it in the whole entirety, it says, and Jesus is rejected. You didn't get to hear the rejection part. The great scholar said, no, that wasn't the lesson today. But I don't know how we can hear how pleased they are with him. If you don't also hear that as pleased as they are with him, they reject what he has to say. Because here's what he says. I am the one. I am the anointed one the Spirit has sent me. And I've come for those that have nothing. And then reminds us in the scripture, you and I still struggle. Our nothing may not be an immense pile of stuff, but we're carrying so much stuff of this earth. We too are poor, oppressed, longing and broken. And God says, that's exactly who I've come to save. 
to set you free. All of that comes at an invitation. God inviting you. And somehow you are here today because somebody someplace said, come. And we are challenged today to, to hear this message and not only know that the invitation is for us, but we got to take a risk to include everybody. This is an all kind of passage kind of day. Now, the reject Jesus part, you know, you always hear this message, right? You know, no one can speak in their own house. No one's a, an expert in their own hometown. We miss the point. That is not the point of this passage, in my opinion, because that's not what they reject. They didn't reject him. Remember, they are pleased with him in verse 15 and, and in verse 20 and verse 22. They go, wow, this is the guy. This is our hometown boy. Look what he can do until he speaks truth. And the truth, he says, God came to love all of you and forgive you. And they got angry. And even more so, if you continue in this passage, not only are they angry, they chase Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, the one who's going to forgive all sin. They chase him out. His miracles don't stop, though. He continues because all of this has happened as he proclaims who God is over and over again. And you and I, at times in our life, have tried to chase him out because we don't like what he says. And it's not always because we're scared to, to tell somebody else. Sometimes we're scared to even feel it that that message is for you and for I. For today we are here. We have worth and value that you are uniquely made. We weren't meant to look like carbon copies that's all science fiction. God's message, God's truth says, I made you, and I made you as I desire, and I long for you to love and be loved and to love others. They didn't want to hear that message because it means now they got to do things differently. It was good when the hometown boy spoke, but now <laughs> what he said made him uncomfortable. So I want to make sure you remember this passage someday. This isn't about hometown boys, hometown girls can't speak in the places where they were brought up. This is about what was said. How do I know? A couple years ago when I first had the privilege of coming here, one Saturday night, a couple of folks, about 10 of them gathered together. These are folks that, you know, were going to hear the preacher, the, the hometown girl that they had been supporting for multiple years on my seminary journey. And then they were going to go great, have a great dinner with wine and everything and celebrate, right? Hometown girl done good. So they come at 5.30 on 6 o'clock. Now, if you've ever been here on 6 o'clock, they were worried about getting a seat. And 6 o'clock on Saturday... Most don't roll in until about two minutes till, and there's plenty of room. They packed in. It's time for this girl to speak, right? And I bring it, because I'm going to tell them what I think. And they look back at me, and each time I speak, they look and they kind of, so I speak more. I speak longer. Now I'm seeing some boredom, but I'm going to reel them back in, right? I have something to say. I tanked it. I blew it. And they were too polite in the end to tell me that. Instead, what did they do? They tried so hard to find something polite to say as we shook hands on the way out. And they said, well, the music was good. I didn't sing. I tried to share that message from what I thought had to be said. No anointing. I was going to force God on them 
instead of letting the Holy Spirit that even Jesus Christ says, the Spirit of the Lord anointed him. And you and I, through our baptism, through the gift of receiving the bread and the wine, the grace, you have been anointed but you got to carry the Holy Spirit with you. You're not called out to do this on your own. Not only does God's love for everybody, but no one asked you to be perfect. And that's on God. The selflessness, the joyfulness, that's our hope that we can continue to learn. But we've got to be invited back and back and time again to be invited again to hear that's right, God loves me, and I have worth. And if I know that, I can proclaim it to a stranger who too needs to be invited. The passage today was scary, for they heard that the message of the Lord was for the Gentiles, not just the Jews, not just the chosen. That's the message they rejected. They didn't reject our Lord and Savior. They rejected the words that came out of his mouth that God had come for all to save us from our sin so we'd be free. What are you willing to risk today? And knowing that there will be times people will be angry. We know this to be true. We watch the media and this line saying this side and this side of the pew saying and they can't even get together. And God says, you better come to my table then and bow down because you guys can talk and argue and fight, but I've got this covered in love. And then God says, you were called to be peacemakers. So cross the aisle and love one another. So we leave today. I'm going to invite you to do some simple steps. First of all, there are folks right in your midst right now that are crying out to be seen, that their pain and suffering is not invisible to the world. And they need to know it. They need to know you know, not their circumstances, but you know they have worth. Stand beside them, alongside of them. And then as we confidently know that, go into the world and be a change maker. Meaning, I challenge you just to be more friendly. I challenge you just to take a risk. In the moment I showed her the app on my phone, I was doing a woohoo. Woohoo, look what I can do. But as she humbly walked up to the clerk, it was woohoo, look at what you do, God, over and over again. Provide for your people. The challenge is today is to love and then give thanks. Amen.